Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to this week's installment of Fabricator Series Segments where every single week I upload one more chapter, sometimes two, of how to build a two chassis front end which is demonstrated on this S13. So, if you are not subscribed already to the Fabricator Series YouTube channel, absolutely go down right now and push that button so you don't miss the next week's uploads. If you're not familiar with the Fabricator Series, head over right now or after this video to the Fabricator Series uh, dot com and, and there you'll find the build blogs on how to build a two chassis front end where each week there will be another episode posted and in there you can get onto the discussion of everything, ask questions, talk about it amongst everybody else and all kinds of other good stuff. There's also a lot of great stuff for you to learn while you're over there. You can also check up on facebook.com slash the fabricator series. There's always another upload, another update, something else going on and I'm also a big fan of Instagram so head over to Instagram at the dot fabricator. Check all the information below here, and I'll have all of that there. If you need to get a hold of me, send a message, drop a comment, drop me an email, do whatever you got to do, and I'll always try to get back to you. So without any further delay, here's this week's episode of How to Build a Tube Chassis Front End. Okay, well you might have actually noticed in that video there just a moment ago that that was not me slicing the front end of this car apart. So it's kind of interesting, that was the owner of the car's brother and he decided he wanted to come in here and do all the cutting instead. I said, hey, sure, no problem. So he went through a quick briefing and uh, showed him what was needed to cut and he sliced it off like a champ. Not bad for a first timer. So for right now, I'm just kind of getting the front end uh, just kind of locked up in here. I'm using my, uh, my Clico rivets. They're temporary fasteners. You find them a lot in aviation. And uh, I'm basically just throwing it in there, kind of trying to line the fenders up as best as possible. Because notice we have almost nothing to attach them to anymore. And then I'm going to put the bumper on. Now after that we're going to take some measurements and get all of this put back together and we'll start getting everything ready to bend and cut tubes. This just gives us an idea of where we're at right now. Okay, so notice that the front section here I actually left in its bone stock form. And that is so I can fasten the front end down while I'm under here. Now, I'm just going to use one of my larger Klecko rivets. And if you, if you don't have access to Klecos or you don't have a Klecko in general, uh, you know, don't despair, it's okay. Um, you can use timber or, you know, some fasteners, you know, some hardware, whatever you got, you know, laying around the shop that you can use to fasten those down. So like in this instance, I don't have one that's, a, you know, about the size of a 3 8 hole, so I have to, I have to use a smaller Klecko, which I believe this is a quarter inch hole size, and, uh, just use a couple washers to shim it down there and keep it all held together. So it's just a little trick that I have I'm using different sizes on different pieces. So just going to get this front end pretty much set up in place. I got a little bit of wiggle room. And with it all lined up here, I can start shimming and measuring and getting everything in place where it needs to be. All right, one of the best places to start here, since we sliced all of this uh, sheet metal out of here, is to build the primary tubes that go in there. They're the base of everything uh, that holds this whole front end together now that we've gotten rid of everything. Now, it would be ideal, of course, if we can just put the sheet metal and fenders and bumper and everything back together and it just it would land in place and we just take off from there. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. We actually have to get this front end set back in place in a point in space. It kind of sounds difficult and you say, how do you do that? Well, this is it. These front brackets, these hold the, the bumper in place and they attach to the original core support. Now, unfortunately right now with nothing in there, they can move around freely and then we need to actually pick their point and, and uh, have it held in place where it needs to be. So um, right now they set the height beautifully though. They actually hold the bumper up and the front end and when it's all put together, it's actually sitting at the correct height. 
But what doesn't sit right is its position or its relative location to the rest of the chassis where it used to be versus where it is now. So you can go back and, and measure the original chassis in the same points that you're going to measure here and you want to make sure that it's going to land in those same spots. So what we're going to end up doing right now is take my measurement, which was from the strut bolt, which is identical on both sides, down to this inside bolt. And I have 30 and a half inches, which is it's actually close to my original measurement. This one, 41 and 3 quarter, which is dead on to my original measurement. Measure this one, 41 and 5 eighths, so that's just a little bit off. 30 and 3 quarters. So both of these sides are sitting relatively close, but not exactly identical. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of flat stock to stick these two together, and that'll give us our position inside and outside. And then I'm going to cut another piece of flat stock to run from this bolt here to stretch up to the front end, and that will hold its, its position fore and aft. So left, right, fore and aft, we have the, everything will be held in place by the sheet metal, and then we'll measure again, square it out, and then we'll start bending our primary tubes and get everything set up. Real simple. right here is one of those moments where we're just going to let math do all the work for us and make it easy. So this piece is about 20 inches long, so we're going to mark it at 10 inches. And when we measured up the old chassis, yeah, it came out to 8, no, excuse me, it was 17 and 3 quarters of an inch from those two bolts center to center, 17 and 3 quarters of an inch. So half of that is 8 and 7 eighths of an inch. So we'll measure outward 8 and 7 eighths of an inch, and we'll measure the same thing on this side, eight and seven eighths of an inch. And we'll just kind of make those as, you know, as straight as possible. I'm gonna drill a rather large hole here, so. And we'll put these right in the center. One there, one there. Now these two marks right here is where I'm gonna drill the holes and that's gonna center the two bumper supports, so or the two supports that we had there, that's going to actually center them right where they need to be so we can get that squared up correctly. Alright, so we'll just get this uh, set in here real quick, just kind of mildly, loosely if you will. Just kind of in place, free to move a little bit. So we want to make sure that we get this measurement correctly, and that was at 17 and 3 quarters of an inch part, which we have the holes drilled for. And we need to make sure that we actually get it in there, that the distance between each of the bolt heads is correct, center to center. So we'll just kind of throw these in here real quick. Take a loose measurement here, 17 and 3 quarters of an inch, so you know what, lucky we actually get that right on the first try. Let's see, that shifted only slightly, so I'm just going to have to give this a little nudge. There we go, right on the money. So, let's start at this edge here again. 30 and 3 quarters of an inch. 30 and 3 quarters of an inch. So those are set correctly. 41 and 3 quarters of an inch. Forty-one and three quarters of an inch. So we're actually squared up right where we need to be. Now the tricky part here is going to be getting this clamped down without a whole lot of distortion here and movement. Because as of right now, this front end is completely squared up. And get this 
very tightly clamped. And we're gonna measure again. 30 and three quarter. 30 and three quarter. Well, we can't really measure that one. From here, it looks like 41 and 5 eighths. I bet you if I stretched it downward without that clamp there, it would be the same. But this one's actually coming out to 41 and 5 eighths. So let me actually let me get that clamp out of the way. That comes out to 41 and it's like 11 sixteenths. actually have the same here so we actually should be good to go here this front end should be completely squared up now and with all of our measurements duplicated and exactly the same as before we cut all the sheet metal out here we can begin to start cutting all of our primary tubes and getting them set in place so let's get that going